I'm sorry, Mitch. That's six. I was just writing that over there. Yeah, it is 16. I was thinking 17 for my stats class, but thank you. Anyway, a 16 area under a curve. Let me share with you up on my television screen how this is going to be done. The rectangles, trapezoids, midpoints, and use those that we can take the area of to approximate the area under a curve. So here is our scenario. Up on the television screen, I've graphed the function f of x equals sine of x plus 3 on the interval from 4 to 10. And I want to approximate the area under that curve. What is the area of this region from A to B under the given curve? When I say under the curve, that means from the curve down to the x-axis. Does that make sense? All right. So I don't really have a formula for that area function yet, but I can fit a geometric figure to that region and tabulate the area of all those pieces to approximate the area under the curve. So as you can see, I have an n value set to 6. There are six different green rectangles that are going to approximate the area under the curve. What do you notice about the endpoints of that rectangle? All the rectangles, the endpoints are To be more specific, it says right endpoints right here. The right endpoint of the rectangle is on the line, right? We are going to have what are called left endpoints and right endpoints. When I talk about right endpoints, that means that the height of this rectangle, the height of this rectangle is f of 5 because at the right endpoint, at x equals 5, that's the point where the rectangle touches the curve. I can switch to left endpoints. Now, what if I changed? Yeah. The first rectangle, its height is given by f of 4 because on the left side at x equals 4, that's where this rectangle intersects the curve. Would this first rectangle, from x equals 4 to 5, would this first rectangle give an over approximation or an under approximation for the area under the curve? Would it be overestimating or underestimating? Why over? Goes above. How about this rectangle from 5 to 6? Would it be an over approximation or an under approximation for the area under the curve? Under. Why under, Dustin? Because it's all under. Right? There's a little gap. Right? There's this little white space that I haven't accounted for, right? If I add up all of these areas, aren't some of them above the, X, uh, above the curve and below the curve? So if I add up all those areas, it's a fairly decent approximation for the area of the curve. Find the area of the first rectangle, find the area of the second rectangle, and the third rectangle, and so on, and so on, and so on. And I'd have a pretty good approximation for the area under the curve. According to this document, it's about 18.06. How can I get a better approximation? Have more, have more rectangles. Instead of dividing it into six rectangles, what if I divided it into 24 rectangles? Isn't there less error? There's less overestimation and less underestimation. There's less above the curve that I've added on too much, and there's less below the curve where I haven't, on, I haven't added on enough. Does that make sense? We could use left endpoints. We could use right endpoints. We're also going to use the midpoint. Rather than the rectangle intersecting the curve on the left or right, now it might intersect in the middle. Rather than f of 6 being the height of the rectangle or f of 7 being the height of this rectangle, now its height is given by the midpoint of 6 and 7, or 6 and a half. 
this is a pretty good approximation because doesn't each rectangle give an equally likely part of being over or under the curve? I've got a little bit over approximation here versus a little bit under approximation here. So reasonably speaking, those two would kind of cancel out and that's a pretty decent approximation for the area. I could add all, also add on more rectangles, get an even better approximation for the area under the curve. Find the area of all of those rectangles, add them all up. The area under the curve, f of x equals sine x plus 3 from 4 to 10, is about 18.19. We could use rectangles. We could also use a different figure. Say I want to do trapezoids. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with two parallel sides. So like the ones in the diagram, the two parallel sides are the left and the right. We call them bases. The two parallel sides are called bases. The other side, the other pair of sides, are the legs. Base one, base two, with two legs. This is usually a pretty good fit too, because it kind of models the rate of change in the curve as it goes from one trapezoid to the next. There's very little area that I haven't accounted for because this distance is pretty much the same rate of change that the curve has on the given interval for each trapezoid. We're going to be finding approximations for areas under a curve using left endpoints, right endpoints, midpoints, and trapezoids. So running through those one more time. Left endpoint, the rectangle intersects the curve on which side? The left. The first rectangle, its height is given by f of 4. From x equals 4. I plug in that value to my function. There's the height of the rectangle. Its total height is given by f of 4. The next rectangle, its height is given by f of 5. The next rectangle, its height is given by f of 6, and so on. The right endpoint, now the rectangle intersects the curve on the right-handed side. So the first rectangle, its height is not f of 4, but f of 5. F of 5 gives, f of five gives us the height of the first rectangle. f of 6 gives us the height of the second rectangle so on. The midpoint is where the rectangle intersects at the midpoint of each interval. So rather than the height starting at f of 4 or f of 5, the height of this rectangle, its height is given by f of 4 and a half, the midpoint of each subinterval. Trapezoid is a different shape altogether. I fit trapezoids in here. I have the shape where I have two bases, kind of like a rectangle, but I use another side leg that it would be the leg of the trapezoid to fit the, uh, the curve. So let's practice a few of these for a given function. I can slide over here for those of you online. Approximate the area under the curve for our function given by f of x equals 2x minus 1 on the interval from 1 to 4. Use three different subintervals. We're going to try left endpoints, right endpoints, midpoints, and trapezoids, as you guys are kind of seeing off to the side. So let's get that graphed. T-chart. Let's just start making a table. When x is 0, f of x is 2 times 0 minus 1, so negative 1. When x is 1, f of x is equal to 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 1. This is a line, so it should have a constant rate of change. What's the next line going to be? 
when x is 2, f of x is going to be? Every time it goes down by 1, every time x increases by 1, f of x increases by? As x changes by 1, f of x changes by? Two, the slope. I plug in two. Two times two is four minus one is three. Five, seven, two, three, three, five. Get a little bit more on top. We're going to approximate the area under the curve for f of x equals 2x minus 1 from 1 to 4. So basically, this region in our graphs. This sentence here says three different sub-intervals. So along the x-axis, I'm going to need, for left endpoints, three different rectangles. Each rectangle has a width of one. Here's our first rectangle. Here's our second rectangle. Here's our third rectangle. If I'm using left endpoints, the first rectangle intersects the curve on the left-handed side. The second rectangle intersects the curve also on the left-handed side. The third rectangle intersects the curve on the left hand side. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Say again? I was about to say the area of triangles. They're similar, they're almost the same. Base times height. All these rectangles have an area, I'm sorry, a base of what? One. So the area approximation is going to be 1 times the summation of all of the given heights. This height would be f of 1, f of 2, f of 3. The area of the first rectangle is 1 times f of 1, plus 1 times f of 2, plus 1 times f of 3. Since they all have the same base of 1, I can just take 1 times the summation of all the respective heights. F of 1 should be 1. This first rectangle has an area of 1. Base of 1, height of 1, total area of 1. Oops. F of 2 is 3. This first rectangle has an area of 3. 1 times the height of 3 is 3. Second rectangle, F of 3, its height would be Second rectangle has an area of 5. Base of 1, I of 5, total area. So the area under the curve, as an approximation using left endpoints on the interval from 1 to 4, is given by 1 times quantity 1 plus 3 plus 5, which is 1 times 9, or 9 squared units. Have I lost anybody there? Let's try.
are the next circle here. I've got right end points. Let's adjust my picture. I'm going to use right end points. Let's see if I can sound through some of this. Right endpoints means where does each rectangle intersect the curve at? Where does each rectangle intersect the function at? I'm using a right endpoint approximation. It's right side. So when I draw the first rectangle, I'm not starting the height on the left side, I'm starting the height on the right side. It's going to be an over approximation rather than the under approximation that we have using left-handed endpoints. The next rectangle starts where the previous one left off. Hasn't changed is the length of the base. How long is each subinterval? How, how big is the base of each rectangle? One. One. So the area is still the common base of one for each rectangle times the summation of each of their respective heights. This rectangle intersects the function at x equals two, so its height would be given by f of two. Rectangle of three for its common, its given height. F of four all the way up on top. F of two was the same three. F of three was the same five. The height of the last rectangle, plug in x equals 4, I get a value of 7 for this given height. Three plus 5 is 8, plus 7 is 15. Take each height times the base of 1, total area is 15 squared. Is that going to be an over or under approximation? Over, obviously. How about the left-handed endpoint? Is that an over or under approximation? If you go back to the first one we did. Under. So wouldn't the area under the curve be somewhere between 9 and 15? And I could get a better approximation by doing what? Instead of using three rectangles, I could use 10, 20, more, as long as it's more. Because I would decrease the part that I'm overestimating by or underestimating by, the gaps between the curve. My rectangular summations. How is midpoint going to be different? Let's go do our last rectangular approximation. We're going to use three subintervals, so I'm going to have three rectangle. But where does each rectangle intersect the curve? On a midpoint approximation. Not at x equals 1, not at x equals 2, but where? At one and a half, in the middle of each subinterval. Draw that. Here it 
is the middle. It's two and a half. The point of this next subinterval. It's three and a half. I like midpoint approximations as opposed to left and right endpoint approximations is to get an equal part of both, under and over estimations. Our area is the same common base of one times the given heights, f of 1.5, plus f of 2.5, plus f of 3.5. I don't have a table of values for these, but it's not too hard because we're just using a linear approximation, a linear curve. One times f of 1.5. Two times one and a half is three, minus one is two. Or f of two and a half. Two times two and a half for the height of the next rectangle. Two times two and a half would be five, minus one is four. Two times three and a half would be seven, minus one is six. First rectangle has a base length of one. Height is given by, by f of one and a half. So let's see here. One times twelve. So Unplug that, and let's do the trapezoids. We're going to stack trapezoids from left to right. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides, and the other two sides are not parallel. Whereas we're going to stack trapezoids from left to right, that looks something like that. A trapezoid has two pairs of parallel sides, base one and base two. The height of the trapezoid is the distance between the two bases. So I'll call the height that horizontal distance from left to right. I'm basically standing a trapezoid, but instead of running it left and right, I'm standing it straight up. What's the formula for the height of a trapezoid? I'm sorry, for the area of a trapezoid. What's the formula for the area of a trapezoid? Guys, remember? It's kind of a weird one. The area of a trapezoid is so one half the height as the sum of the two bases for a trapezoid. Its area is given by half the height times the sum of the two respective bases. So let's draw trapezoids. Luckily for us, since this is a line, a trapezoid fits this curve perfectly. Not always the case. We have the first trapezoid between x equals 1 and x equals 2, the second trapezoid between x equals 2 and x equals 3, and the third trapezoid from x equals 3 to x equals 4. Since I've stacked the trapezoids from left to right, do some of the trapezoids share bases? 
Are there some common bases shared by each of the trapezoids that are in the given diagram? For how many trapezoids is this a base for? For how many trapezoids is this a base of? Two. For this. Two. And for this. So the first and last base is a base of how many trapezoids? One. Everything in the middle is a base shared across two different trapezoids. Let's keep that in mind as I think about how we're going to find the area approximations for these Different shapes. Couldn't the ones on the sides also be uh, the basis for like a big trapezoid? Yeah. Since this was a linear function, couldn't I find the area of the whole region by just thinking it as one big trapezoid? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do a quadratic one tomorrow where that's not the case. Okay. Since this was just a linear function, it's just one big trapezoid anyway. These trapezoids fit the region perfectly. What is the height of each trapezoid? From left to right, how far are we talking? One. Just one. This base length is given by f of one. Next base length is given by f of two. How about the next one? This base length can be found by doing f of The last one, f of 4. Keep in mind what's important about the bases for f of 2 and f of 3 versus f of 1 and f of 4. These are bases for how many trapezoids? And these are bases for how many? All right, for a trapezoid. Instead of base times height, its area is one half the height times the sum of our respective bases. So for our figure, since we're using some intervals of width one, the height of each trapezoid is always one. From base to base, the height of each trapezoid is always one. Now let's start combining our bases together. The first base started with f of 1, and it was a base for only one trapezoid. The next base was given by f of 2, and it's a base for two trapezoids. So I'm going to put 2 times f of 2. f of 2 is a base for two different trapezoids. f of 3 was a base for, three trapezoids, or for two trapezoids as well. And then lastly, f of 4 was a base for only one trapezoid, so we'll add on f of 4. See, let's plug in our function values. f of 1 was going to be 1. f of 2 is going to be... 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 1, which is 3. F of 3 is 2 times 3, which is 6, minus 1, which is 5. Plus F of 4. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 1 is 7. One plus two times three is seven. Plus two times five is adding on ten more for seventeen. Plus adding on seven more makes twenty-four. Half of twenty-four is twelve. Using trapezoids, we can approximate the area under a curve. I kind of like trapezoids because it fits probably the best of all of them. Left endpoints and right endpoints are all right. Midpoints are probably better than those two, but trapezoids are best of all three. I'm going to go back to that same GeoGebra doc here. Let's see what we got. I'm going to change this to 2x minus 1. 
we're going to go from a starting endpoint of A. Can I slide that to one? Yep. And three. I want to set this to three subintervals. So let's change my n value to not two, but how about three? There go. And now I have three distinct trapezoid to rectangles being graphed. The area is going to be given by this calculation down below. There it is. So when we use left endpoints and right endpoints. Zoom. endpoints we had an area of nine yeah that looks right I've messed this up by my zooming in and out Slide this over to one. That got in my way. That's what caused me the problem. Slide this over first. There we go. Left endpoints had an area of nine. Right endpoints had an area of 15. The midpoints between the two give us 12 for the area approximation. And then lastly, for the trapezoids, an area of 12 as well. To adjust that in the right order. 